Project Ascension by The Myth and Darth Lake 22, Chapter 8. Being hit by several square pounds of water isn't something some any pony had been expecting that day, but nonetheless, that's what happened. Twilight and Shining Armor were the ones hit, and sent sailing over the rest of their party in an impressive bound. Applejack was the first to react, rushing in, but a jet of water came up out of the ground beneath her, slamming it to her stomach and sending her up into the air. Kids, go to a safe distance, Pinky told the youngest, uh, the three younger members of the party. They nodded and ran for cover. White paid them no heed. He summoned several orbs of water over the remaining members of the group. Luckily, they all managed to dodge. Pinky was the next to react, whipping out her party cannon and letting loose a blast. Out came not confetti or glitter, but what appeared to be cake frosting. Another orb of water burst right through it, sending the sticky substance in all directions. Another blast saw ice cream emerge. Again, it was deflected. A third ball of streamers did the same. <laughs> okay. Are you honestly expecting to hit me? No. I'm expecting to strike you. This sentence registered in his brain a split second too late as a recovered Applejack hit him in the side with a powerful buck. Staggering sideways, he didn't recover in time for a second strike. He went tumbling, but rolled right onto his hooves. Applejack charged forward as White summoned a jet of water once more. She dodged to one side, only to be hit by another jet to the first side. White's triumph was short-lived as Twilight took the moment to return to battle. A blast of magic came forward, but more streams of water protected him from the unicorn's attack. But only that unicorn. At that moment, Rarity, forgotten because she stepped back at the beginning of the fight, marched right in and lit up her horn. White summoned more streams in an attempt to block, but it failed because what Rarity cast wasn't an offensive maneuver. A bright white flash blinded White's eyes. He yelled in surprise and pain, covering his eyes. This left him wide open for a right hook for the Fastenisa. Stumbling back, he suddenly hit something hard. He opened his eyes, adjusting to the light in time to see he was trapped in one of Shining Armor's shields. Must see you escape from that! <laughs> so White smirked, well, if you exist. At that point, several pounds of water pressure erupted from him, hitting old sides of the shield. The pressure was too great, and the barrier collapsed like broken glass. White landed on his hooves. But Twilight decided to shoot a beam of magic out. He was quick enough to dodge it, sending a stream of water to her. On impact, she flew to the wall and yelped in pain as she fell to the floor. <laughs> no hard feelings, White said to Twilight as he charged toward her and fell into water. Before he could reach Twilight, he felt something collide with his side and was sent flying to the other side. Once he got his bearings right, he saw Applejack charging toward him and bucking him straight in the face. His hose came up to his face, and he started growling as he was rolling on the floor in pain. How's he allowed fight, you little formant? White gave an honest answer. He slammed an orb full of water directly into the farm pony's face. As Applejack stumbled back, he got to his hose in time to dodge an attack from Rarity. He slammed his hoof against the Fastenisa's face, sending her to the ground. Twilight was up next, tossing every offensive attack she could think of. White either dodged them all or blocked. Eventually, he got another strike, sending Twilight to the ground. What he did next was excessively cruel. He summoned a stream of water and sent it directly at Twilight. It forced itself down her throat, entering the wrong pipes and causing her to choke and sputter. Stop! Shining Armor yelled, running toward Twilight with murderous intent. Just as he was about to tackle him to the ground, however, White jumped straight in the air. As he stumbled to a stop, Shining Armor realized too late what White's true intent was. The evil unicorn knew full well he didn't have the time to successfully drown Shining Sister. He just needed one of them to charge him blindly. He looked up to see White summoning more water from his hooves. He pointed straight down at his foe. Thirsty! With that, Shining Armor was slammed in two directions, above and below, by a violet barrage of water. The captain of the guard felt his hooves bend and his organs about to pop. Once it was over, he fell to the ground, moaning in pain. Oh, you're still alive. Well, you'll stay down for the rest of the... A blast from the party can stopped him. It didn't strike. He managed to avoid it, but it annoyed him nonetheless. Okay, you... White began before Pinky fired again. White dodged, then summoned a jet of water from where Pinky was standing, and it engulfed the pink pony for a moment, putting her out of sight. When it cleared, Pinky simply fired again. Just before the ball of confetti struck him, he realized Pinky had somehow been quick enough to scoot herself in the cannon back. 
The party favors covered him as he stumbled across the ground. Shining Armor, who had been more resilient than his opponent had given him credit for, took the initiative and jumped in the air, covering himself in a roar of magic. White saw him coming and rolled out of the way, with Shining hitting the ground next to him. A violent shockwave erupted from the spot that Shining had landed on, and a miniature crater was formed where he stood. White got back on his hooves and shot out a few more streams of water to him, but Shining kept blocking them with his shield magic. Think fast, boy! White shouted out to him as another stream of magic hit him, but instead it curved and was headed straight to Twilight. Shining immediately sought stream with magic and turned to White with livid eyes. Another aurora of magic formed around him, and he galloped towards White, who was seeing streams of water at Shining. It was no use. The water simply bounced off of Shining once it made contact with his aurora as he spun up his gallop. He collided with White, and the magic aurora exploded, sending both ponies flying in the opposite direction. Shining! Twilight gasped as she quickly caught her brother with her magic and landed him safely next to her. Oh my gosh! Twilight panicked at the state of her brother was in number of bruises forming on his body, and his coat burned for the explosion. She immediately cast a spell on him that enveloped his body with a soothing aurora, and the wound started healing, though slowly, as she was no nurse. You gotta pay attention to your enemy first, nerd! Twilight turned to the voice of White, and a ball of water slammed against her frame, causing her to skid across the area. Luckily, she cast a spell on her that acted as a temporary shield, though her concerns grew when she saw White make his way toward her. He summoned more balls of water and sent them toward her, but she was quick at her hooves and dodging them. Applejack saw her chance and decided to act. She so ran up to a surprised White and quickly slammed a hoof against his face, which caused him to stumble slightly. Another hoof hit him again on the other side of his mouth, causing him to recoil from the strength of this earth pony. As he reared up and bucked him hard on his muzzle, sending him flying and landing on the floor hard with his hooves massaging his face. She looked down upon him and let out a hump as her nostrils flared in disgust at the pony before her. <laughs> as White was rolling on the ground in pain, the others decided to charge down with full force. She got close enough to trample him before a ball of water hit her, sending her on her back. So the distant unicorn smiled as he rose to his hooves. You know, for a backwater hick, you're pretty... The sound of the party cannon firing stopped him. He spun out of the way of the ball of chocolate cake and flew toward Pinky, Jets of water erupting from the ground. He ended up right next to her. Don't you dare touch her! Rarity yelled, dancing toward him. You brute! At that point, water erupted all around him, sending the two mares in the air. Like it? He mocked. Another shield formed around him. He saw shiny armor, smirking heavily. Cute trick, but have you learned? As it turned out, he had. Shining tightened his shield, squeezing white into a ball. Cursing, he summoned his water to break free. It was out in seconds, but it was all the strikes it needed. Shining ran forward and smacked him with a hoof. He went tumbling back, only to be hit by Applejack. He fell into a blow from Twilight, who blasted him on the ground. Oh, that is it! He snarled angry. His body began to shimmer. Then, suddenly, water emerged from him. Water that took the shape of a unicorn stallion. It was white in body shape, but made entirely of liquid. Another came, then another. They spread around the area, dozens sliding around. Let's see you dance with these! The water forms came charging at their group, who took up defensive positions. One form came up to Pinky, and she fired her cannon to it, but it absorbed the cake and was unharmed. Hey! That's not fair! She yelled out as she shot more cakes at the form, but no avail at all. Applejack bucked at the forms, only to have them regenerate, and she started to become extremely tired. Rarity came to her rescue as she shot some beams at the forms, but they were ineffective due to regeneration. Shining and Twilight fought their way to their friends, and Pinky came dashing to them too. Together, they were encircled by the forms, and White looking triumphantly in the back. I just had to say, on the behalf of this writer, White, you are a cheating, no good loser. Shining, I have an idea, she said to her brother, who looked at her for a brief second before turning to the forms. What is it? Form a shield around us when I say now, okay? You got it! Well, I had no idea what they were playing, but he just rolled his eyes. <laughs> Let's end this! He said that softly, as the forms came in closer. Now! Shining activated his shield, but before it reached the ground, a trail of lightning escaped Twilight's horn. It traveled at the speed of light to the forms, into white, 
who was still buzzing at least for five seconds as he was being shocked with his other forms in the process. Once it was done, he collapsed to the floor, with his legs twitching and coat slightly burned thanks to the electricity. The water forms dissipated, and the water began to evaporate, leaving White behind. White groaned as he got up, only to fall back to the ground. He looked at his right hoof and saw it turning to liquid. Crying in shock, he looked himself all over as he began to leak, so to speak. No, no way! I... I can't... <laughs> as he spoke these words, his body became wire entirely, and it evaporated in the air. The group looked on in confusion and horror at what just happened before them. Did... did he just die? Shining axe out of the blue, as Twilight looked walked up closer to the site where White had been. She looked at the floor and frowned slightly before looking up to her brother. Seems that way. Whatever magic he was doing, it came at a price. She said as she walked back to the others. Spike came running up to her as she caught him in a hug. Mom! Are you okay? He asked his mother as he looked up to her with moist eyes. Twilight just smiled warmly at the sight. As he blinked once more before grinning at her son. It'll take more than one insane pony to take me down. I hate to break up the tender movement, but Scootaloo's still out there. Shining Armor pointed out, and whatever was put into that unicorn was likely put into her. The group tensed up. What do you think we should do, Twilight? Rarity asked. Twilight nodded. We better all go to the palace. We can get passed up, and I can find something that can help me lock on the tracer spell on Rainbow Dash. We need to find out what that maniac did with my soldiers. Shiny noted. We better get moving. Scoots! Scootaloo looked up at Rainbow Dash, who sped from the door to her bedside. Scootaloo, however, looked away as she sighed away from the presence of the Cyan Mare. Rainbow was confused by this gesture and prompted to place a hoof on her. But it was shook away as Scootaloo's body moved further away. Scoots? It's me, Rainbow! I'm here now! She looked hesitantly at Rainbow, and she could see the concern in her eyes. Rainbow's expression turned from concern to horrified as she gasped at Scootaloo's form, and Fluttershy looked away. Scootaloo wanted to shed tears, but all she could do was clench her teeth as her tear ducts were dried out. Suddenly, a pair of forelegs and wings encircled the weakened filly's form. She felt herself shake, but it was not her moving. The tremors were coming from Rainbow Dash, as she sobbed into Scootaloo's mane, with her feathers forming a cocoon for the two of them. I'm so sorry, Scoots. <laughs> she muttered as she raised her head and opened her eyes to reveal bloodshot eyes that could only display sorrow and guilt. Scootaloo looked into her eyes, but Rainbow immediately shut them and buried her head in her filly's mane as she sobbed further. She did not care for her image as a pony who never cried, nor did she care she was to be called out for it later on. The moment she laid eyes on Scootaloo was the moment she realized just how much she had failed her. What made it worse was that none of her friends blamed her for it, and something inside her told her Scootaloo would forever hate her. What? What have they done to you? She whispered as her tears landed on top of the filly's head. Scootaloo's lips quivered as she felt the warm embrace of Rainbow Dash. It was as though it were an eternity since he felt was a crest like this. She heard a yelp coming from the door and was held by another pair of wings as Fluttershy hugged in Scootaloo as well. Newfound tears were present in her eyes as she lowered her head onto Rainbow's chest. Fluttershy looked at Rainbow. Both of their eyes bloodshot from the tears that had left their eyes, and they both looked down upon Scootaloo, who only tried to warn her way out from after seeing the two mares' eyes stare at her. Scoots? Rainbow began to speak as she still had Scootaloo, but felt her moving away, trying to force her way out. What's wrong, Scoots? You needn't to worry. I'm here now, and you must think I'm a freak! Rainbow and Fluttershy scoffed as Scootaloo spoke those words. Rainbow looked at her in disbelief, and Fluttershy placed her hose on her mouth as it laid open. Scoots! What are you talking about? Scootaloo looked up at Rainbow's shocked face, and only mastered her glare for a second. You must think I'm a freak now because of this horn! She shouted at her though she coughed as her voice became hoarse for screaming and said she had done that day. Rainbow was not going to stand for her. Her shocked face turned into one of pure determination. 
as he drew in the filly closer. She felt a sudden chill for Scootaloo's shackles as her frame was now pressed against hers. But she ignored it because of what that filly needed right now. Scoots, I don't know what they did to you, but I promise you we'll fix this and you'll be back in Ponyville. Back home. Rainbow Dash said softly to her, as he struck the filly's mane that had become dusty from Celestia knows what. Right now, you need to tell me. Where can I find the keys to your shackles? She asked the filly as she looked down at Scootaloo. Scootaloo lowered her head slightly. Well, that black and blue guy are always close to that bloodwing jerk, so they may have the keys on them. She explained to Rainbow as he was listening intently to Scootaloo's words. I'm not sure, sir, about the others, but there is a yellow pegasus who works here. She explained further, but she saw the scowl on Rainbow's face when she mentioned yellow. I don't think Blaine has some cause. Rainbow's ears pricked up at Scootaloo's words. Wait, who's Blaze? She asked Scootaloo as he leaned toward the filly's head. The, the red one. He says that his is his real name. He was in here earlier. Scootaloo answered Rainbow, who became slightly worried at his news. Did he hurt you? Rainbow Dash demanded as he placed her hose on the filly's shoulders. Scootaloo shook her head. No, he gave me water and ice cream. Scootaloo replied, letting off a small smile at the sudden kindness he did. A silence followed after that. First, I looked at Rainbow, who could only frown at the filly's information. Well, we still shouldn't trust him. I'll go find Bloodwing, then we'll get you out of here. Fleshy, you stay here with her. I'll be back. Before Fleshy could stop her, she flew off. Rainbow Dash turned and weaved through the hallways, staying toward the ceiling as quiet as possible. She was determined to find the keys and get Scootaloo out of this forsaken place as fast as she could with the Sonic Rainbow. Just as she turned around another corner, however, she was assaulted by a bolt of lightning that sent her to the floor. Twisting in pain, she looked up just in time to see two more bolts coming at her. In a flash, she flew back, tossing the two bolts. She wasn't surprised to see who was responsible. Cantering toward her was a familiar yellow pegasus mare with a malicious grin that emitted a murderous lust in its wake. You! Rainbow spat as she took a defensive position. Yellow was beginning to snicker softly, which slowly became a hideous cackle as he flicked her head backwards. <laughs> Well, well, what do we have here? She asked in a false cooing tone. Rainbow's nostrils flared as she stomped her front hoof, ready to attack. Where are Scootaloo's keys? Yellow just closed her eyes as she chuckled at the question thrown at her. <laughs> oh, no. Why must you try and take her away? I've gotten kind of attached. She sneered at Rainbow as she licked her lips. Rainbow glared with utmost fury at Yellow, her temper rising. She's my Scootaloo! Now give me the keys or else! Yellow grinned as she waved a hoof in front of her. Don't you remember? You kicked her out like a piece of trez. She's our property now! Yellow says she looked upwards dreamily and smiled sickly. <laughs> the things will do to her. Rainbow threw a punch at Yellow, but she was too quick and dodged it effortlessly. Rainbow's body began to shake uncontrollably as Raph took control. Listen, you little skank! Rainbow spat. You're not hurting her anymore. I'm not letting her stay here any longer, and I'll take you down if you come in my way! Yellow just closed her eyes as she shook her head with a devious smile. Of course! You're the hero, so you have to rescue her! He says he looked up to stare in Rainbow's eyes. Although, Yellow charged forward and attempted to strike Rainbow with her hooves that were energized with lightning, but Rainbow backed away from her reach. A large blast of lightning suddenly shot from her body, traveling towards Rainbow fast. She barely had time as she rolled out to the side to get out of the way. Yellow stared down at the alerted Rainbow. Her wings furled and lightning shot out at them, hitting and cracking the walls around her. I'm the villain. So's, I will have to kill you here and now. <laughs> Chapter 9 As she sat with Scootaloo in the cold cell, Fluttershy did everything in her power to put the filly's mind at ease. 
She held on to her and began humming a lullaby to Scootaloo, which had instantaneous results as she was able to calm herself down. Scootaloo furled her wings slightly as Fluttershy let go of her, and she looked up to the caring Fluttershy's face. Fluttershy? Yes, Scootaloo? Fluttershy replied to the weakened voice of Scootaloo, and she lowered her head to hear the words properly. Do, do you think Rainbow will be okay? She asked feebly as her throat was burning slightly. Fluttershy visited slightly at this innocent question, but she honestly did not know. She knew, however, that she had to install hope into the filly, even if it was a slim chance. Scootaloo, there's one thing you must know of Rainbow Death by now. Scootaloo turned her head sideways. Confused by the statement Fluttershy gave her, she thought she knew everything there was to know about Rainbow. But even in situations like these, a pony learns more of surprising ways. What's that? Fluttershy smiled broadly at the filly. She never gives up on those she loves. Scootaloo stared in awe at the words spoken by the shy Pegasus. The one she loves. Love. She loves me? Scootaloo wondered, and the more she remembered her idol crying over her, comforting her, the more she was convinced that she did care for her. Regret, however, slowly began to creep in, as she also remembered the hateful words she spat out to her. Scootaloo looked down at shame as more memories flooded her mind. Scootaloo, what's wrong? Scootaloo sniffed as she continued to look down. I, I failed her. I said all those mean words to her. I thought she was giving me up, but I... Scootaloo! As soon as she heard her names being shouted in a scolding tone, her head flew upwards to see Fluttershy's face looking down at her with a frown. Scootaloo! She said again in her kind demeanor, as she reached the filly and held her close with her wings, covering the little body she was embracing. You haven't failed her at all. We failed you for not believing you when you needed us most. But I... Scootaloo tried to push herself away, but was stopped as she saw Fluttershy give her a short version of the stare, which made her go numb as all to, to escape the embrace left her. No buts, young lady. She says she continued her stare, was slowly melted seeing the filly obliging to her. Fluttershy held her closer to any before. Now, listen to me, Scootaloo. The moment you were gone, I have never seen Rainbow Dash look so sad in my life. And the moment she realized you were telling us the truth, she was crying her eyes out because of what happened. I've never seen her cry so much in my life. But that alone showed me how much you mean to her. And how much you mean to all of us. Fluttershy whispered to her as tears were slowly making her way down to her cheek. And I speak for every pony that is out there looking for you. I am so sorry. Scootaloo was starting to tear up as she felt her head being wetted by Fluttershy's tears. She tried to restrain her tears, but as she felt more tears land on her tiny head, her body began to quake as she sobbed into Fluttershy's chest. When we get out of here, and we will, Rainbow Daz is going to sign the papers to adopt you. She'll take care of you like you deserve. You'll have a family. Fluttershy spoke softly to Scootaloo as she struck her head softly with her hoof. Scootaloo lifted her head to meet the caring, blue, steer-tained eyes of Fluttershy. Really? I know so, the eldest Pegasi said, kissing her head. Rainbow Dash will be back here any minute. Rainbow Dash hit the wall as another bolt struck her. She suddenly realized just how bad a situation she was in. In a cramped hallway like this, her wings had limited maneuverability. But Yellow had all the space she needed to fry her opponent. Still... The athletic Pegasus was nothing if not persistent. She flew up and over the other Pegasus and down the hall. Yellow followed, laughing. <laughs> oh, come on, Rainbow. What do you hope to accomplish? Even if you do get away from me, you're going to alert at least one of my friends. Rainbow slowed to a halt, moving only to dodge another lightning blast. You're right, the Cyan Mare said, turning around. I guess I'll just have to kill you here. Yellow chuckled as if her opponent just told a semi-amusing joke. Cute! She muttered, the air crackling around her. Well, let's see what you... She was cut off by Rainbow Dash, slamming into her at high speeds, setting her into a brick wall. Dazed, she began rising to her hoofs, 
only to be struck again. Rainbow kept striking her with her front hooves, moving at an impressive speed. Keep it up. Move too fast for her to activate her... It didn't take long for her host to be dashed as yellow lit up, shocking her. She then threw a charged punch, knocking Rainbow to the ground. <laughs> now, why don't we just get to the heart of the problem? <laughs> she laughed, pressing her hoof on Rainbow Dash's chest, lighting up her powers. The cyan mare screamed, twitching and moaning. Her vision was beginning to fade as she could hear the sound of a sick laughter of yellow resonating in her ears, but her costumes laid with Fluttershy and Scootaloo. Though before she could even lift a hoof, she felt her face being punched hard by yellow, and she felt unconscious. Lights out! Colors! <laughs> she sneered at the fallen rainbow, lifting her hoof from her face and checking the corridors. Running outside, she began to move onward t before her head snapped as she heard a sharp yelp. She looked behind her, only to see the corridor leading to Scootaloo's cell. Oh, she must have brought her friends along. Oh, well. She shrugged casually as she tried past the fallen rainbow. More for me. <laughs> when she reached Scootaloo's cell, she noticed it was opened, and immediately took action as she entered the cell. She looked all around her and saw only the filly lying on her side, facing her away. Why the hell is your cell open, huh? She so yelled at Scootaloo. He just turned slowly on her side and looked at her with a grumpy frown. Will you be quiet? I'm trying to sleep. Sleep, huh? She marched forward to Scootaloo and pulled her head up by her mane. Scootaloo let out a yelp as he felt more pain originating from her head as she clenched her teeth hard from this experience. You'll get more than enough sleep when you're dead! She snarked at Scootaloo. Who was wincing from the pain? Now, tell me, who came into your cell, you little pussy? As Scootaloo opened her eyes, she saw Fluttershy tiptoeing outside the cell. That red Pegasus came in here earlier. Go annoy him if you want. What? Red? See, so asked Scootaloo, who huffed and nodded. What the hey was he up to? As she let go of Scootaloo, she slowly turned around to face the door. You want to know a secret? Yellow immediately perked up as Scootaloo said these words, as she turned back to give her fullest attention. This was enough time needed for Fluttershy to escape, as Scootaloo to let out a soft sigh, only audible for her ears. Well, what's the secret? Spit it out! Scootaloo snickered as she ran to her face. You're a fat, ugly cow, that's what! She told her as she spat her eye, Yellow flinching slightly as she backed away from the bed. Why, you little! A clanging sound was heard from outside the cell, followed by yet another yelp. Yellow looked back at Scootaloo, staring daggers at the filly. When this is over, so are you! With that, Yellow flew out the cell, getting her close to it. Glancing around, she muttered, Where are you? Fluttershy pressed herself against the ceiling, praying Yellow wouldn't look up. She trembled, sweating heavily. Come out, come out, wherever you are. She purred in every direction, hoping to hear something. Oh, real original! Skulu marched from her cell. You shut your mouth, bitch! Or I'm going to come in there and knock those damn teeth out! Yellow barked at her as she gazed back to the cell. Fluttershy flew off, as Yellow was distracted looking at the door. She got three feet before she got struck in the back by a bolt of lightning. Crying, she hit the ground as Yellow stood over her. Well, it looks like I'm too for two! At that point, she was hit in the side by a very angry Rainbow Dash. Fluttershy, run! She yelled. The Yellow Pegasus didn't need a second bidding. She flew off, trying desperately to remember the way out. Yellow screeched. Punching wildly at Rainbow Dash. You little bitch! Little? Rainbow said mockingly, flying up. Still, her body wavered. She clearly wasn't in any mood to continue. Yellow swiftly bucked her in the face, knocking her out, and she fell to the floor, limping from the electricity coursing through the failure in Pegasus' body. Yellow smirked triumphantly, and with a lightning speed, she was off to catch flutters. 
The castle grounds were in anarchy with the arrival of the wounded Captain Guard and his younger sister and her companions. The guards were well known for keeping their stoic features in check, but even showing their own captain hurt was like he was was enough to bring them release, a slight gasp of shot from the stay of him. One of the guards came running towards Sighing, hastily saluting his superior. Sir! What in the sweet equestrian hoppet? He asked his commanding officer, and Shining let out a groan and rubbed his ribcage soothingly. Shining sighed as he looked behind him to see his sister, who was also slightly hurt from the fight beforehand. He had to give her credit for coming out of a mess like that with only a few scratches. He thought to himself if she were to join the guard one day, she would outrank her brother in a matter of months. We've been attacked by a hostile, just by the southern entrance, Lieutenant. I want you to take four squads and allocate them to each of the entrances of Carolot. No punny for the next 24 hours is to set foot in or outside the city. Then, I want you to gather a fifth to accompany me and the element bearers to whatever this force is hiding. So. With that, the lieutenant and four other squadrons of Pegasi flew off to the post, just as they were given by their superior. Corporal! Signing caught out to another guard on standby. Send word to the princesses we are dealing with ponies with unnatural magical abilities. Enough power to rival the elements and the guard. Yesa! The corporal saluted as he shouted to his captain and ran off to the royal courtroom where Celestia was located. Twilight, limping slightly from the pains he was experiencing, walked up to her brother and looked down with worried eyes. Do you think that'll be enough to stop them? She so asked her brother, who turned to look at her with concerned eyes of his own. Shining shook his head. I honestly don't know, Twilight. This isn't like some chainsling or diamond dog assault we've withstood before. This is something way beyond even me. He answered truthfully as he could. But what if... Whoa! Twilight wobbled in place as he was becoming dizzy from the overuse of magic. Spike quickly ran toward her, holding her in place as she regained her sense of balance. She smiled immediately at her child, who nuzzled in gratitude. Thank you, Spike. Spike smiled at his mother and crossed his arms behind his head. <laughs> Anytime, Mom. He answered her with a slightly smug smile as it soon turned to a frown. You still have that spell to locate Rainbow? Maybe she found Scootaloo already. Twilight nodded as she looked down at her son. I do, but I don't want to move in until we get some backup. White was powerful enough to take us all on. I can't imagine what the others are like. Anyways, you're not coming with us. You are staying in the castle. But... In the castle! I mean it. She ordered him with her commanding voice, and he was visiting his tail as he nodded and looked up shyly at his mother's face, was soon turned caring as he planted a kiss on her forehead. Appletech and Rarity, in turn, told the younger sisters to go in with Spike, too. But so you what are you... Applebloom argued, but was immediately silenced when her sister gave her a glaring look. None of that now, little lady. We'll take it from here. So he said to Apple Bloom as he ruffled her hair to cheer her up. Sweetie, do go with Apple Bloom and Spike too because I know she's. Sweetie just rolled her eyes as both she, Apple Bloom, and Spike made their way into the castle. I'll have some guards watching him. Sion commented. Your girl wants Apple Bloom and Sleigh Bell too, ain't ya? Applejack asked. They could be a bit of a handful, but. Lilox, we got it. A guard answered her gruffly as he trotted past the dejected looking Applejack, who just tilted her head upwards as she glared at the guard. Darling, I must ask, how do you intend we handle the rest, if they are all as powerful as that brute? We'll just have to get clever, the purple unicorn nodded. Red and yellow attacked with fire and lightning. We need to find a way to turn those elements against them in our rematch. We need to assume that black and blue have powers as well. And there's no telling what Bloodwing's done to himself. So, for fire, we use water, right? Pinky tamed in. Oh, I'll have my party can with water balloons. No, I have a better idea for Red. And if you have read the second and third stories in, the, in this series, I have a few ideas myself. <laughs> and one for Yellow. We'll need to think of, about what kind of powers the others have, but we can guess they're elemental like the others. We have another problem, Shiny cut in. We still don't know where Bloodwing is, or if Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy got there. I can still sense Rainbow, so she must be okay. I heard the other two on their way back here right now. I want to go home! Fluttershy cried, flying as fast as he could, so he could see daylight. 
She was almost out. Oh, come on. I just want to talk. She could hear Yellow shouting from the corridor. This only caused the nature-loving Pegasus to fly even faster. Finally, she was at the entrance. She barely noticed when she exited, only changing flight paths to fly straight into the air. Her legs hit the top of the adjacent building, causing her to stumble a bit. But she regained herself, and she flew to the castle. She had a mission. Yellow just stopped at the entrance way, assessing the situation. Oh, Luna, damn it! She cursed her rotten luck. But she had to silence the mayor before she could find out what their plans were. Setting herself in position, she lifted her wings and lightning shot out from there, cracking the ground as the lightning struck it. She then flew to the castle grounds at lightning speed, determined to catch her prey. Fluttershy turned around to see the menacing presence of Yellow coming at her fast, and she gasped as she flew faster toward the castle grounds. She dared not turn her back in fear of being captured by the yellow streak of lightning that was approaching her. She wielded all of her power to, into her wings and flew faster than ever she had done in her life, determined to make it to her friends alive. She looked down and saw her friends at the castle ground, and sighed in happiness as she dived on toward him. Then when she did, she could hear the crackling of lightning behind her, and the taunting laughter of her chaser. <laughs> I've got you now, little birdie! <laughs> Flaresight ignored this, and still flew down to the ground below her, where her friends were at. She inhaled a sum of oxygen in her, and let out a scream so loud, every pony at Canterlot turned to the source of the noise. Twilight's head jerked up, and she saw Flaresight coming toward him fast. Flaresight, slow down! Pinky squinted her eyes for a clear flew. Bad idea, Fl Twilight! She's got a bad pony chasing her! Pinky yelled as she pointed her host to yellow right behind Fluttershy. Shining armor, despite his injuries, Fred up toward Twilight and conjured up a shield spell large enough for every pony in the ground to be enveloped by it. Twilight was shocked by her brother's move. Shining, what are you doing? Fire size! Twilight, trust me on this one, okay? As he said those, Fire was near contact with the shield and her face turned to terror just before she was about to crash into it. Shining, however, made a small opening for her as he flew right into the shield with a mighty flap of her wings. She landed on the ground hard with the other mares rushing toward her. Yellow, however, met the full force of the shield, but with added electricity from her wings, she cracked the shield and landed roughly on the ground, where a number of guards were encircling her like sharks to a blood source in the water. You are hereby under arrest by order of... Signing didn't get a chance to finish that statement, because at the moment a large surge of electricity surged. Redundant sentence is a redundant. Throwing the guards away, standing, Yellow threw her hose against the shield like a mad pony, desperately trying to break it down. Shining strained, but the barrier didn't waver. Finally, she stopped and thought. She was spent for energy and not likely to win a direct confrontation. Probably best to cut her losses now. I'll be back, she promised, ticking to the sky. Guards, follow her, Shining commanded, dropping the shield. Catch her, I don't care. At that point, Twilight calmly saw a blast of magic straight at Yellow. Its aim was true, and the Pegasus went rigid, falling to the ground. She didn't move or jostle. She was as hard as stout as you. They'll keep her petrified for now. Twilight explained. There was silence for a moment. Twilight, darling, Rarity began. Why didn't you use Alan White? He was moving way too fast. Besides, it takes a lot of magic. And no telling what else could go wrong if I had missed. Do you have anything in the dozen capable of holding her? We'll find out. Sighing nodded. Guards, take her away. I'll be down to interrogate her shortly. Budwing rubbed the top of his head with his hoof. So, the element of kindness got away, and Yellow just chased after her? That is the case, sir. Black lot of loyalty, so we at least have her. Oh, goody. Bloodwing said sarcastically, we have one of them. They got one of us. Now possibly two of us, if Yellow isn't careful. So I son read after her. Bloodwing was silent for a moment, as he tapped his hoof to his chin and thought, No, you go yourself. I'm starting to doubt Red's loyalty to our plots yet. Blue nodded, very well, I'll have a box soon. You best. Something tells me we are going to have to step our plans up. A salve done. 
Blue answered as he bowed before Bloodwing and ran outside the building. Bloodwing turned his attention to Black, who was standing behind him with a triumphant smug look on his face. Now then, where did you put loyalty, if I may ask, Black? He questioned Black as he sauntered over to him. Black shrugged as he closed his eyes. I just placed her in with our other guests, thinking he may be lonely and some company might cheer him up. He answered Bloodwing, who smiled wickedly as the burned it. Good, he said in a hushed tone as he tried away. This would be useful to me in an experiment. He told himself as he rubbed his hoofs together in glee. I think you deserve a reward. He cooed at Black as he held the syringe in his hoof. Black's smile widened as he saw it, and like a little dog to a treat, he got exceptionally excited over it. Is that what it, I think it is, sir? Oh, yes. He answered him as he approached Black, and with a swift movement from his hoof, he pierced the black pony with a syringe, and injected him with whatever was inside it. Black began seeking a place with him crossing to the ground, and yelling out in ecstasy. His forehead started to blade out as a cone-shaped bone shot out from it. Black was laughing like a mad pony as he felt his back being ripped open with wings coming out of it. When it was finally over, Black stood there in a pool of blood as he gave off an evil grin formed on his face. How do you feel? Black turned to Bloodwing and snickered. <laughs> like a royal on crack! <laughs> Meanwhile, Red was standing outside the room and heard everything transpire. He let out a sigh and reached for what appeared to be a key on his body. With a flick of his hoof, he held the key close to his chest. He let out a sigh and looked down glumly to the floor before looking up with determined eyes. <sighs> oh well. I better get to it before it's too late. He mused to himself as he tried toward a corridor. Each step he took felt like the world was vibrating in favor against him. Like a petty house thief, he looked behind him all the time, making sure he wasn't being followed. Once he reached the cell door, he opened it carefully, popping his head inside before his entire body followed afterwards. <laughs>